the new Charn Elf were North American Indians who lived along the seaward coast of Vancouver Island, Canada, and the Olympic Peninsula of Washington State. Results of the comparatively warm climate and abundant rainfall in their habitat include forests of fir, cedar, hemlock, as well as plenty of elk, deer, bear, and a variety of large waterfowl. The abundance of fauna in this region helped Nutica society flourish. The Nutica staple diet included salmon, crabapples, nuts, roots, ferns, lupine, and berries. Nutka houses ranged from 40 to 100 feet long and 30 to 40 feet wide. Each house sheltered several families related under the same father. These massive houses were built broadside to the beach and crafted from sea beams and hand slip boards. The houses were occupied all winter and all summer and served as the main fishing stations for the families. In the fall and spring, the houses would often be transported from village to village in the seasonal shifting of residence. The Nootka's dress was quite homely most of the time. In warm weather, men would wear almost nothing and women would wear skirts of shredded cedar bark. In cool or rainy weather, both sexes would use cedar bark robes and cone-shaped hats, while in the coldest weather they would wear animal skins ranging from sea otter to ragoon. Nootka usually went barefoot. Ceremonial attire was much more elaborate with prized robes and many different types of complicated masks and headdresses that would represent the heads of various animals. Childbirth was to the Nootka a very special event. There were huts specifically made for childbirth, and the mother and child were always given a few days before coming back into regular society. The Nootka were very loving and lenient towards their children, never spanking or slapping them, only talking to them. The parents always gave them great attention and taught their children well, often regarding the rights and wrongs of their society. Marriage was not just the union of two people, but also of two families. People would get married soon after beginning puberty. The proposal would be performed by the boy's parents at the girl's home. However, the marriage proposal was never accepted the first time. Two or more attempts were necessary for the girl's family to accept it. Only important chiefs could practice polygyny, having seven wives, and this was a sign of wealth. Starting marriage at such a young age caused a high divorce rate, but surprisingly, the reason for many divorces was childlessness. Should the husband or wife die, a close relative of the deceased was usually chosen as the replacement. Nootka society was extremely elitist, and each person had his or her own unique individual ranking among society characterized by wealth and influence. However, the only truly foundational division was between slaves and freemen. All Nootka were considered kinsmen. The Midlatch was the great ceremony of the Northwest Coastal Indians and focused mainly on two aspects. One, the validation and updating of individuals' rank via the heredity, and two, the distribution of gifts. Each individual that was to receive a gift of the Midlatch would sit in an arranged seating order based on social status and hereditary right. The gifts were distributed in an appropriate order once the soon-to-be acceptor of the gift was seated. The Nootka, like many seafaring Polynesians, were not very religious. The Nootka were among the first of the West Coast tribes to encounter Europeans. They first made contact with Spaniards at Nootka Sound in 1774. However, the meeting was brief as the Spanish quickly left back for Baja California. In March of 1778, the Nootka encountered British explorers led by Captain James Cook, who spent one month at Nootka Sound. The arrival of the discovery made the Nootka anxious, but Chief McKenna sent seven warriors into canoes to go out and try to understand what these people wanted and what they are after. Upon doing so, the warriors noted certain similarities in appearance between Fish and Cook's crew. Trade began quickly, and Cook was impressed by the evolved culture and cleverness of the tribe. However, the trading stopped as quickly as it had begun, and minimal contact with Spanish followed. In 1803, Nootka captured the American trade ship Boston, killing all but two of the crewmates, only one of which escaped. A similar situation occurred with the Tonkin in 1811. By 1830, 
90% of the nutka had been wiped out by sexually transmitted diseases, smallpox and malaria, depicted in this film as a horde of monster drugs. Devastated by the heavy casualties, the few survivors simply mixed into other tribes.